So our next session is based on assessment data and reporting by Dwayne Cox. He's my colleague and technical account manager at Schoolbox. Over to you, Dwayne. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, as Inda mentioned, my name is uh, Dwayne. I am one of the technical account managers um, at Schoolbox. My uh, previous to this, I was a teacher in a Catholic school in eastern, uh, southeastern Melbourne, where I was involved in the implementation of Schoolbox out there. My background is uh, teaching and learning, and I've come into to Schoolbox looking at that. Today, um, what I'm going to talk about is something that a lot of people have been asking questions of Schoolbox, uh, which is the, the notion of summative reporting um, and data availability. Now, to give you an idea, my knowledge of how databases work has stemmed from about three months of, of self-teaching and conversations, so my understanding is, is very basic, but the reason why I'm doing this is because there is sometimes within IT teams or within schools the need to get the data, um, and I kind of wanted to show that it is possible for everyone within there. So about a month and a half ago, we released a, a blog post on summary for reporting and four different ways in which you could go about doing that and looking at the various repositories of, of information. So the four suggestions that we made were one was about um, building the report directly out of the Schoolbox database. Um, a lot of schools didn't understand and, and know that this was an option, so it's one that we've been putting out there and having more conversations about. The second is about pushing the grades into a CIS and then producing the CIS from the CIS markbook. You could use the, the grades within a CIS to then use it within an assessments area. So within Synergetic, this is obviously, you've got the class markbook and then you've got the assessments area. So there's two different ways you could go about reporting. And the last one is obviously utilizing third party reporting software. Um, so an example of this is Accelerus. So then you are able to export the data from Schoolbox and then utilize within those uh, reporting platforms. So I'm going to briefly touch on these four methods, the way in which the data looks within Schoolbox. Um, I'll also show how the data looks within the Synergetic Markbook, um, as well as we do have a tool to export Accelerus data, um, so which was made for a school uh, earlier in the year. So the first thing I'll touch on is obviously the Schoolbox database. Now, if you don't have access, we're more than happy to give you read access to your database. This is absolutely fantastic to see, um, obviously, far more data than is visible through the interface. You could then go through, use your crystal reports um, or any other um, analytic software, such as Power BI, um, to use that information to generate what you want to present. Software-wise and accessing it, um, I myself use MySQL Workbench. It's a very, very simple user interface. Um, it's free and it makes it very easy to visualize the information. Um, our support guys use command line to access it, but any other tool that handles uh, an SQL database will handle this. So one of the reasons why I like to use MySQL Workbench is it allows you the ability to look at the database structure. Now, in version 17, what we've started to do is we've started to put foreign keys into our database tables. So what this allows us to do is to look at the structure and visualize it. In MySQL Workbench, you can create what's called an EER diagram and reverse engineer that from the database. You end up with something that looks a little like this. Now, it's obviously very small detail, um, but what this is, this is the assessments area of Schoolbox. So this shows you the links between the multiple tables, where these tables interact, what is the commonality throughout the platform. Now these are very, very helpful, especially if you've never looked at our database before, to understand what are the links, where does the data exist, and how does it flow through the system. One of the big things you'll note when you're looking in the database is there is a lot of information. Um, when you consider your reporting, by having all that information available, there's a lot more that you can do in generating either dynamic reports or your static reports. There's a lot more available. To give you an idea of generating a static report, this is a uh, query that I ran the other day just to generate static report data. So this looked at a few of our tables, so it looked at the user table to grab the user details. It looked at the submission box. So the submission box is where the submission took place. That has the assessment name and the assessment details. 
the submission mark type. So I was able to classify and group the type of mark that was used. The folder, so looking at where the assessment item was found, the folder code, which is the class code, the user table again, and then that gave us a report that looks something like this. So this gave me the class code, the class name, teacher first name, teacher last name, the assessment description, the assessment type, student first name, last name, and the two marks that are there. So the normalized mark plus the weighting. So that query is something that can be used over and over again to generate the data for that particular class. Again, this was a simple static report that was generated. More complex versions of this is you can go into Crystal Reports, use these similar queries to build that infrastructure and those assessment reports. The usage behind that is it allows you to then to filter your assessments. So you can start filtering your assessments based on a student name. So you could grab data just in, rel in relation to that individual student. The data doesn't necessarily have to be from that year. It can be across their entire time within the school. You could base this on class codes. So you could grab data for class codes that obviously may have been repeated or to look at that cohort. You can look at it at a course and unit level. So a lot of people talk about analytics and being able to analyze the data. By querying the Schoolbox database, you can actually go through and look at the assessment data from a course and unit level, which allows you then to do even more comparative analysis of assessment tasks, the results and the comments within there. Assessment type. So within a school box, you have the assessment types such as oral, exams, um, those things that you define in the back end. You could go through and map just your common assessment tasks to get only those common results that you want. One big benefit of this is this allows you then to start using those external tools such as Power BI, Crystal Reports, and many of the other analytics platforms that are out there, um, which are ever-growing, being analytics and data is one of the big things that we want. So as I said, that was, is a very basic understanding of the Schoolbox database, and that was just the assessments area. But one of the big benefits of doing that is you have access to far more data than you probably need and you can start to trim that down and get just what you want out of the database. So that's one of the options, and that's one of the ways of generating those reports. The second one, which mainly relates to our synergetic schools, but I wanted to show this because it's a question that I've been posed a lot over the last six months, is how does the Markbook Sync work, and how does that feed into synergetic? So one of the first things to know is that the results only sync across when an assessment task has been marked on the class page. So it's not when the assessment items are created, it's when the assessment items are marked. What it does do is it creates the assessment item in the class mark book and then obviously attributes the grade and the comment to the students. It's able to go across the old, um, the old style was as the OG raw mark, which was a, a raw result type that we defined within your Synergetic instance. So that was part of the installation. There's now the ability to map to existing mark types within Synergetic. And I'll show you how that's done a little bit later on. The results we write back are a normalized result out of 100. So whatever the result is, we normalize it out of 100. We also send back the comment and the waiting. So that information is sent across. For those of you that haven't used the Synergetic Markbook Sync, there is a little toggle in the, data, uh, in the administration area, which is under Administration, Settings, External DB. There is External Markbook Synchronization. When you turn that on is when the results will start to be populated within Synergetic. If you want results previous to that to go into your Synergetic database, we can do that, but it's a support ticket to do it. As soon as that's turned on, as soon as results are started to be assessed and marked within Schoolbox, they're created within Synergetic. You now also have that ability to, instead of using OG raw, you can map assessment types to various mark types within Synergetic. So this was something that was released about two, three months ago and allows you to customise the results you're sending across a little bit better. 
This is found under lists and work type. And this allows you to map, as I said, the assessment task type to the external sys type. Now, if you don't put a code in there, it will map it against OG raw. So it will still go back to that raw mark. This allows you to do some pretty cool things in regards to if all of your common assessment tasks are mapped to a particular work type in Synergetic, you then can e more easily start to generate your static reports and your summative reports because it allows you to specify that you only want to look at that mark type within those reporting areas. In Synergetic itself, there are two locations where the data comes across. This is class maintenance, and within class maintenance, this is where the assessment item is created. It's hard to see on these screens, but what you'll get come across is the heading of the assessment item, you'll get obviously the mark type, which up until recently was only a raw mark type. You will get a value out of 100, and you will also get the weighting come across from Schoolbox. So these are those values that populate within the class maintenance area. In the actual class mark book itself, this is where you get across that normalized mark out of zero to 100, as well as that topic comment. So you get your student comment coming across from the assessment item as well. So within Synergetic, there's those two locations that are generating the information. One of the things to be aware of is, as I said, those mark types now, by mapping them, you can use things a little bit better and you have a little bit more option in the way you generate your summative reports. The last way of getting the data out at the moment is through our Accelerus results export. So this is available at a particular URL, and this generates a CSV of a particular set of information, which is the student code, the assessment code, and the results. When you use that, it generates a report that looks like this. It's a very basic report, but for some instances, it does go through and give just what's required, which in this case were just the assessment tasks, the student code, the class code, and that raw result. So this gives a very, very simple CSV that could then be used in Accelerus or any other reporting package. So these methods of exporting information provides a school a lot more power in what it is that they look at and how you look at the data. Because obviously from a school perspective, data is what drives our decisions and drives what it is that we do. So those four options, if I go right the way back, those four options, when we get asked the question of summative reporting, these are the things that we look at. The best suggestion that we can make and the one that more and more schools are looking at is looking at the Schoolbox database because it gives a lot of information. You can customise everything you want to do to then get those reports that you want. So what I thought I would do is try my best to answer some questions. I also noticed that James is sitting in the room still, so he may be able to give me some more information as well. But does anyone have a question, probably more around the Schoolbox database than the other two areas? Yes? Yep. So we do a direct read of all the data. Um, that's fine for this year. What happens next year when we roll over? We haven't actually done that yet. And if we wanted to regenerate a report, last year's report, which reads the data directly, is it going to still be able to do that? Yes, certainly. So the, the data still exists within the database. So when you roll over your classes, we don't actually remove the data from the database. So it does exist there. Your script or the, the way you mapped it may need to change depending on what it is, is you use to find the data. But the data does still exist there and the assessment items would still exist as well. Yep. Secondly, 
Um, to restrict your queries, use date ranges to keep the period of access that you want. So put date ranges around your um, data seek so that you're getting a report for the right period based on those date ranges. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that the mark will go to things when the item has been assessed. Yes. Um, I just had a quick query from the staff a couple of days ago actually that um, three identical entries have been made in the mark book and uh, did a bit of investigation and found that they pushed, um, a, um, pushed a course, pushed an item across to a class page a couple of times and deleted it. Um, but they hadn't assessed the item. So is that a new change or is that? That's actually a known bug. Um, so right now we're investigating. He beat me to it. Uh, there is a known issue currently where assessments uh, can be created multiple times. It's happening because of um, when you're going to use the mark all feature, publish all marks, uh, it actually asynchronously sends all those marks to Synergetic simultaneously, uh, we believe, and Synergetic <coughs> can't process them all in order. So what the impact is, it actually creates several assessments before it realizes one of those assessments is created, and then it starts entering the marks in for all of those assessments. So it's just a, a problem with that asynchronous publish or marks. There'll be a fix for that in 17.0.1. Um, we've already written the code to fix that and it'll be coming out next week. Sorry, when's that coming out? Next week. Sorry, yes. How does the mark book sync um, handle projects and waiting with your projects? <coughs> That is a good question. Um, the individual assessment items I know feed across in regards to the way the project weighting feeds across. I haven't investigated that myself. Um, I don't know if James has investigated that. Project weighting. So. Yes, sorry, I'm back there. At the moment, when we uh, are setting our grades, I've got levels, like level 7, and so forth. But when I, when we, we take normal life, but we get this energetic conversion of the statistic 51, how can we prevent that, or what can we do to let uh, school books push the level 7 into the synergetic as a level 7, rather than a number? So we're only able to push that number out of 0 to 100. What you can then do is if you set up the mark type within Synergetic to then take those values and map it back to your levels, you could go through and do that to get those, those levels matching within the two platforms. But this stage, we can only feed back that 0 to 100 normalised mark. Yeah, the rubrics, so obviously the rubric data exists within the database that's there, which unfortunately 
you only then get that summation mark that gets pushed back across. Sorry. What level of access do you get to those proof of data that comes from data? Yeah, so you get read access to the database. So just lodge a support ticket. They'll give you read access to the database. The database is open, so you can look at all of the, the information that it is within there. So someone at the back. Yep. At this, mo at this time, we still only push all of those assessment items across. You could use the mark type mapping to then have the filtering within Synergetic. So you could say that you only want to look at the assessment type of this that has this mark type. Um, so that was the way a couple of schools went about doing it. And there is a gentleman at the front that's probably got a better answer as well. Oh. So there's a couple of parts to what you've said. So, um, and I kind of look at it from, from two perspectives. Um, one is obviously around the, the staff policy and the way in which you, you look at that aspect of things, which sometimes is very, very difficult for software to manage. So that, that's obviously the first thing that I'll, I'll say in regards to that is that's one approach and understanding behind it. The second one is, and this is where that, um, that centralised development of the, the core course and the way in which those course assessment items are created and then pushed to the classes, um, that gives you that, that centralised aspect. And then you, it allows you, with those details that are there, to have commonality that, that exists there that can be mapped back to the course level. So when you're pulling the data out, they're actually coming from that course level and that unit uh, implementation. So you can actually use that to separate from the unit area in comparison to what's just created on a class page itself. So that core structure helps to um, utilise and define those things that are more centrally controlled. So, no hassles. Yes? Of 
according to type, and that person's job is to make sure that every assessment that gets put into the um, school box is set up in the right way and standard, and that's their job. And we do all our year 7 to 10 reporting out of school box directly, but to the person that's doing the quality management on it. Hassles. Yep. Um, when you're on credit assessment, you know, you can get assigned to a particular semester now in the school box. Does the semester, um, does that respect, is it respected by Synergetic or is it flowed with the correct semester in Synergetic or is it just flowed through to the current semester? Because their schools are obviously starting semester two work yep. while Synergetic still thinks it's semester one. Right? You don't want to notice, yeah. Yep. I'm going to defer that to the gentleman behind you because uh, that's obviously a big one that's popped up over the last six months. Um, so we've made some changes in that, that space just recently. Um, previously, school box would, um, when writing back into the, the mark book, the synergetic mark book, would write back with the uh, user's uh, semester. Now, the user's semester could be anything, um, not necessarily your current semester. Um, so a user could go into Synergetic, switch their semester, and then write the data into a different semester um, based on what they, they were currently set to. We changed that now, so now it uses the system semester. So if your current, if your Synergetic is currently in semester two, any data, any marked data that's entered will be written into semester two. Uh, when you switch the, the switch over to semester three, any marked data entered will go into um, semester three. So you need to be aware of the fact that there is walls in Synergetic and teachers don't you know, necessarily enter their marks between those walls. And so you might have marks going in for an assessment outside of the semester that occurred in. So if a teacher marks an assessment late, um, they come back from holidays and they realise they haven't marked an assessment, they'll need to go into the system, put their marks in, but your reporting will need to be able to tolerate that their mark data may have been entered in um, in a different semester. So just be aware of that, that's very much a big caveat. Um, the best way that I've seen to fix that um, is by using the result date. We, when we synchronise the data back to Synergetic, we put the result date of the assessment, the due date of the assessment into the result date field in Synergetic. You can then filter your report on that result date. So rather than going, give me semester one and give me semester two, you go, give me all assessments between um, the start of the year and the middle of the year, and that will then ensure that you get the assessments for the right period, rather than relying on synergetics last semester, which may or may not be wrong because the data was entered at a different time. James, while you're talking about that, is there, is there a reason why you don't use the result date to, to calculate the semester rather than... Um, for us, we, we do. We, internally in Schoolbox, we use dates for our semesters. We don't use... But in synergetic, they use semesters as a primary key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can, you've got set up your, your semester one dates for semester two dates, so you can really know which I mean, it comes back to this exact problem. I mean, we don't do it because it creates these types of issues where you're getting a period of time when something happens, but it's actually relevant to a different time. Um, and that's a limitation of that semester, um, is that you now have to use the switching in and out of different semesters to do their reports for the previous semester. So we don't, we don't have so that. So if we're, we actually just ignore that, I don't know whether that's useful for anyone else. We actually popped up that in the synergetic based on the due date of that piece. Yeah, and that's what we, we do as well in Schoolbox. So we just, fundamentally we're just ignoring the semester because it's just a limitation that is not, not necessary. So just be aware when you're doing the reporting not to get tied up in the semesters, but to think about it as a result date. No so I think that's the end of the time for this conversation. So uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope that's given you know some places to, to bounce the thinking and, and have some more conversations inside the school. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. We have Craig Mari from Arden Anglican School, who will be discussing more on reporting and analytics. Off you go, Craig. Thank you. Um, a lot of talk about data and where it's coming from or where it lives and where it should live. And um, I think this is a common problem that we're all facing at the moment. Um, when I was first asked to talk about this 
uh, reporting analytics topic, I, I, I first of all sat back and thought about the journey that uh, we've been on as a school. Um, we, so I'm the director of ICT at Arden Anglican School. It's a school of about 820 students. Um, we embarked on reporting analytics with Power BI about 18 months ago. And the, the, the common thread through this was that we were doing reporting off siloed pieces of data. So we were you know, looking at school box data, we were looking at synergetics data, and um, yeah, we needed to get the two to marry and meet. And the way that we wanted to report on things was not always done um, out of the one place. So we, uh, we took a breath and sat back and analysed what we actually wanted to achieve through reporting analytics in our school and where that data was to come from. So there's been a lot of talk in, in the space about data warehousing and big data and all those types of things. So what, what we didn't want to do is end up with scenarios like this where we all sat around and, and decided all the things we were trying to do and everybody just threw their hands up and said, can't do it and move on. And then I tried to look for a, you know, a comical thing around education with big data and, and this, this is the only one that I found that I thought was quite comical. It was still drinking beer though, there's a common theme. So what we, what we need to look at moving forward I think is the, the big data landscape. And if you look at big data landscape with multiple data sources, it looks like that. And I don't think any, any one of us can sit back and say that we have one central source of the truth anymore. It's, it's sitting in multiple places and we're getting it from different places. Right. So the, the old way of reporting off one centralised database um, is, is, is going away. And I think, um, yeah, as, I, as I explained here, you know, single source of data, reporting off that. We all did it with synergetics in relation to academic reporting. Um, then we did some other things with all the other systems. We had Excel spreadsheets and, um, you know, NAPLAN reports came back and they were all in Excel spreadsheets and somebody used to sit there and go through it and analyse it and make graphs. Um, you know, we need to have a more automated way of people getting to that data in a faster way. Yeah, the sources of the data are changing. You look at your uh, community relations people, business development people in the school. Yeah, you know, they're trying to trying to get out there with alumni programs and and all those types of things. So you're looking at structured, unstructured data. You're looking at Facebook data, Twitter data. You're looking at Google Analytics. You're looking at all these data sources and trying to put them together to make a consolidated picture of what you're trying to achieve. <coughs> So what, what we did at Arden is we, we embarked on building the Arden Data Warehouse. And what this is looking at is looking at all data sources and any data source. Um, and then we put that into a staging area and we go through an ETL process. So um, we extract, extract, transform and load our data. So when you're looking at trying to get some of the mark data, summative data, rubrics data. You know, you'll be getting rubrics data from Schoolbox. You'll be getting your marks and so, so forth out of the mark book in Synergetic. So we do that in the, in the ETL process. And we, we bring that through the staging area and then we, we build data marts or cubes. So the cubes are around um, you know, your, your marketing area of the school. You, know, you don't want to be pulling all your Facebook data back and Google Analytics data back and sitting in the academics area because you don't want queries running on that all the time. The other thing to think about with the way that we've done querying in the past is you know, every, you, you've got your whole school community trying to run in synergetics through the day. And that if you've got a teacher that's sitting in the background trying to do some analytics on grades over the last five years, and they're pulling back 600,000 rows of data, you know, all of a sudden you have performance issues in, in the database. So the data warehouse takes that issue away. So they, they do all their analysis off the cubes, and the, the cubes are much faster and self-sufficient than running off the, the synergetic or the school box databases in, the, in a live environment. 
So getting getting back to where where we started and yeah, school box data, we started with Power BI um, about 18 months ago. This this all started. And this was us looking at um, the use and the login rates of um, our school community. So as you can see, we we're just looking at you know, the the login rates of people over uh, per month. What we were particularly interested in was, was what was happening after hours. Um, and we had a large proportion of parents that were logging in after hours. Um, so that, that was some interesting data for us. Then we, we started to look at things like where, where our parents and, and community comes from. You know, where are our catchment areas? Where do they live? And all those sorts of things. This, this was our first step at marrying school box and synergetics data up together. <coughs> so, what we've done since then, is, as I said, we embarked on building the uh, the Arden Data Warehouse. So, what I'm going to try and do now, and I've got the fingers crossed that the going live actually works. Um, I'll have backup slides just in case. So, we've got the Arden Fair on this um, this weekend, so that's 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 not showing anything. Okay. So what we've started to do is have a look at um, students being able to have a look at, um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have my, my kids at, at the school so I can access their profiles quite easily. What we're looking at here is my sons, we've published a student profile report. And this tends to happen every time I try and go live at a presentation. Okay. So <coughs> what this is actually showing is it's looking at um, synergetic data, school box data, it's looking at attendance, it's looking at NAPLAN results that are sitting in Excel spreadsheets back in the data warehouse. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So from here, I can have a look at any, any part of what's going on. Now, we're not taking health and wellbeing into, we're not using that out of synergetics right now, so that's why this is all, all negative. We can look at attendance and the reasons why the attendance is um, are the way they are. We can look at um, NAPLAN data for year five and year seven is currently currently in year eight, so they're the only two that I've got um, prior to. I can have a look at his bandings um, and see how he's progressed from um, year five to year seven. I haven't had to beat him up too much because it's growing in the right direction. Um, we, we're not currently bringing in any co correct co-curricular activities or sports, but we are bringing in um, average subject grades. Okay, so again, this is all you know, across all these subject areas, grades, results, all the assessments that, are, that have um, come out of this year so far. All right, so that, that's, that's part one of putting it back inside school box. <clears throat> this is this is a and I've just killed the machine. The other part of what we've been doing, this is a, a sandbox area of where we're building at the moment. Um, so please um, bear with me while this this is essentially very hot off the press. So 
see if I can remember. All right. <clears throat> so again, we, we're using Power BI for this, but when you have the, the data warehouse, it doesn't matter what BI tool you're using out the front. So you can be using Tableau, you can be using ClickView, any of the BI tools that are out there, you can start to do analysis off the data warehouse. So this is not tying you to, uh, to anything. Um, so this is, this is the, the, the brand new NAPLAN reporting um, dashboard that we've, we've started to look at. And this allows us to have a look at, uh, we're, we're drilling down into NAPLAN year. Um, so you can go to any NAPLAN year that you want to have a look at. You can have a look at any subject area, so you can start drilling down on any one of these. And then you can start going in on a per student basis um, and have a look at, so this is, this is obviously a student that wasn't with us the prior um, NAPLAN time because there's only one result. So you can start clicking through and teachers can start to analyse what's happening with students. We're looking at, um, yeah, this is looking at mark overviews. This is a very messy, um, but once you start drilling it down into yeah, 2017, yeah, what, what grade you're looking for, and then it, you can narrow it back down to individual students. You can measure another student against somebody else um, and start to do analysis on how those three, three children are going. So that's bringing back a, an awful lot of data into to one place that people could just start drilling. Yeah, they could filter it down the way that they want to view the data. Um, and then we're just taking it back a step further. As I said, this is a, a, a sort of um, sand pit that we're playing in at the moment. Um, so this is looking directly at um, year seven. Um, this, this happens to be my daughter. So um, her grades are on, on the, on the in, going in the right direction as well, which is good. Um, so it gives, you, gives people a great, greater representation graphically of what's happening. Um, what else have we got? We've started looking at things like, I'll look at this one, the mark, so this is back to looking at applications versus inquiries in, in the enrolments area of the school. <coughs> As you can see here, when we first put this together, we went, this looks really, really obscure because it's really, really high. This was actually when we, when we came, went from Denby to um, Synergetic and all the records came across with the one date. Yeah. So uh, yeah, some data cleansing might be required there for us to get some more accurate analysis. Um, but moving forward, we could, we could obviously see you know, where our two campuses, we could, this is the junior school, this is our secondary school, um, and the marketing department can start to do some analysis on um, where, where leads are coming from, where inquiries are coming from, what sources, all those types of things. So some of this data has actually been driven out of the Digistorm app. So we've, we've, we're using the, the uh, online forms with Digistorm for enrolments um, and applications. So some of this data has been pulled from there as to where did you find out about Arden. So again, another, another data source. Um, and then we, then we can start to drill into, you know, any year, and that, need, that needs to be fixed because it's too, too many. So we can look at 2017, we can have a look at you know, inquiries versus applications coming into year seven, we can start to drill down on those and see who the actual candidates were, what happened. Um, and then we'll start to drill through as to you know, communication, did we not follow up, why did they drop out, 
why did they not come to the school? Um, we're looking at... Sorry, I can't see this properly. This was us uh, having a quick look at um, community use of um, SimWeb. So we, we run deep links from Schoolbox to Synergetics for delivery of reports, parent-teacher interviews, um, medical information, you know, changing of parent details and so forth. What we didn't have a clear picture of was how many people were actually using that in the school community. So this is going through, it's having a look at you know, where, where these parents live, what their occupations are, and surprise, surprise, more mums than dads log in. So it, it, we can start to do some analysis on, you know, this is looking at two years. Um, I can narrow that down to one year, see how it changes see where it's coming from, we can, we can get that down to, you know, how many have done it in the last month. So it allows you to really drill into all the areas that you want to drill into by just getting all of your data sources and pushing them all the way through the data warehouse so that you can, you can get that information fast. Um, I think that's the only other one I haven't clicked on. So this, this is looking at, um, we, we were looking at class marks versus absences to see whether there was any, any relevance. The one thing that we will take this a lot further in is how many students are sick when an assessment task is due? Um, you know, is it the day before, the day after? Are they, you know, are they always sick on a Friday? Are they, you know, what's happening with a student? So again here, we can just start clicking around into individual students. We're putting in minimum marks for an assessment task, maximum mark, and you know, the theory is that they should be somewhere in the middle of that all the time. <coughs> and if it's, if it's not and it drops down, we obviously want to do something about that for that student. This was an interesting one that came uh, very, very late in the piece. This is having a look at um, absences. So we can start to have a look at absences on a class basis or an individual basis. Um, starting to have a look at, you know, do we have a lot of students that are absent from the one maths class because they don't like their teacher? So. Again, this is, this is looking back in synergetics. We're having a look at an individual student. Uh, and we can see here that they had a one absence event there. So in period four, they were marked down as sick. They were probably down in the sick bay. Over here, period seven, sick. And on school business. So probably a music tutor or something like that. But we could do this on an individual student basis. We could do it on a whole of whole of year group. So if I take that one off, I can have a look at that student across the whole year and have a, have a look at the reasons why and the, and the count of absences. So the theory is that we we can so they were absent for that entire day. But if we start to look at the power of being able to lay over the top of all of that, um, when assessments are due, who is their teacher, what was going on in class, you know, we're looking into the use of the pastoral care system quite heavily at the moment with Schoolbox and trying to overlay that into these types of things. Um, you know, are they getting in trouble in class and then they're having sick days? You know, is there some other thing going on with the well-being of that student? So we're seeing analytics as being a, um, yeah, a magnifying glass to find some of these issues that we couldn't normally see. 
Um, one of the other ones that we that uh, at another school recently that I was at talking about this, they they did some analysis on when demerits were being handed out, and they built a dashboard around that. and And what they found was that most demerits were being handed out um, on the day that all the staff were actually in their staff meetings through lunchtime. So there was a couple of teachers that were looking after all the students throughout the school while everybody, was, uh, everybody else was off having meetings and they were just handing out demerits because they couldn't control everybody. So what they did by doing that analysis was they, they staggered their, their staff meetings throughout the week and they actually seen a, a dramatic fall in the amount of demerits that were being handed out. So yeah, that's just a little example of you know, getting into an area that you really wouldn't think about to make change. And I think that is probably, um, what are we, we're just looking at average grades here, um, Year 7 English. So we're just, we're going through the mark book and we're having a look at the average grade that's coming out of that. Um, yeah, we're looking at getting that back to uh, Year 7 classes so we can break it apart. How are the, the three Year 7 English classes going compared to each other? Um, so as I say, this, this is all in a work in progress at the moment. And this is assessment results per class. And you'll see there it's got the class codes um, and all the categories and results that are coming back through to Synergetics. And again, you can drill through years, go back in history, overlay it with this year versus last year, all of those types of things. Well, that's about all from me. Yep. Over time. Um, I didn't know last year you were with Aira. Were you with Aira still? Or have you been with them for the whole journey? No, not for the whole journey. So when we decided to go um, t towards a, a full-blown data warehouse, we, we obviously sat back and went, can we facilitate this with our internal resources? Yeah. And the answer was no. Yeah. Um, and Aira came to us with, a, with a, a fix that allowed us, we didn't want to worry about yeah. When we go to the next version of Synergetics and we have one database, not four, I don't want to sit there and remap that data warehouse. I don't have the resource all the time to do that. So that was you know, one of the major reasons that we look for an external partner to help us with, with the building of that data warehouse. Yeah, well, I've been talking about and I was, I was also wondering about, um, so when you talk about you know, resources that you've got, have you, had to, have you got like a data person, um, you know, sometimes it's half a teacher or something like that, or have yep. you got one? We, what time, how much time are you spending on it? Your team, I suppose. Probably, it's quite minimal, to be honest. So we we will give them a specification um, of what we want a dashboard to be and what needs to be represented on that dashboard. Um, we've given them access to uh, our internal environment, so they come in and they build it on our internal environment re remotely. Um, we've set up the connectors with the, the obviously the school box read only access and the synergetics access, um, and we upload the the Excel NAPLAN things into a central repository for them to deal with. Um, but other than that, not a great deal of time. Then we go back with the directors of teaching and learning and and analyse what's there and what they would like changed, um, and that's the part we haven't even done that yet. Um, so that's how fresh and new this is. So I've got to go back next week and sit with the directors of teaching and learning. You know, where do they want things? Do they want certain things on certain pages? And how does that work? So it's 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 constantly a work in progress. It's looking good. Thanks. <laughs> Yep. 
Yep, so we have we have access to do that do that ourselves. So some of our old old reports there with login details and so forth, they're now sitting on top of their they're our reports. And my second question is how are you dealing with user access? So access control. Access control? Yes. Yep. Yes. So we're just working on that at the moment. Um, the if I can get back to here. This is actually, um, we've put a third party key in the back of Schoolbox, and this is actually passing the credentials over for my son, so he can only see his data. So if I uh, go in here, and I go to my daughter, You'll see down the bottom there, it's got a whole heap of jumble. And that's, real, that's, that's pushing and passing through that that data is only related to her. Sorry? That's not Power BI. That's not Power BI. That, that's a, um, another HTML page that we've embedded inside Schoolbox. That's, but the data's been driven from the warehouse. So what I was trying to show with this was that it doesn't have to be a BI tool. It can be anything else as well. We didn't get. I don't like to get my hands dirty that much, but uh, no, we. Basically, when you're going through that, that process is more based on the specifications of what you try to achieve as an end result. So um, you, you need to tell them what metric you're trying to achieve, and then they'll do, do the, um, the ETL process of getting, getting that data out of the data sources to give you the metric that you're after. I hope that answers. Yep. No other questions? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I get. Yeah, I'll go back to you know, the key. The key is to get it out of um, the operational data sources, so that there's not pressure and load on those all the time. Um, I think you know anybody, any one of us that's given um, MS Query access to admin staff in um, Synergetic can. You know, they know if they type in the wrong thing and are pulling back three million rows of data. All of a sudden, the marking of uh, yeah. yeah. So it's essentially so essentially you've got links to an external provider that's basically pulling that data out, um, tidying it up a little bit, and then yep. pushing it back to you in a way that you can use it. Um, yeah. So that ETL process goes off and it looks up the Excel spreadsheets, yeah. it knows the columns and headings that it's after, extracts that out, and puts it back up in the staging area for you yeah. to use. And how often does that keep um, keep cycling? You know, so mm. so is it, is it is it a live thing or is it something that's, that, that that you have to uh, you know? request for that data to be yeah. pushed across and then tidied up? At, at, at the moment we're doing it on a nightly basis. Oh. Um, but you, know, you could you could increase that as, as much as you require, so. That's oh, really cool. Yeah. No other questions? I'm done, Inda. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Greg. That was good.